Okay, welcome to you all back after this lunch. Now we have a special guest from Austria and I want to welcome to the South Asian Energy Forum to Professor Bernard Pelican. So I'll show some of the highlight from here. <clears throat> Very good. Visible? All? Excuse me. It's visible. It's visible, sir? Yeah. yeah. It's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 So, okay. Just, this was the theme of the day. So, we are running in the day two. The theme is planning and design. So, this is the just uh, uh, our team expert. Altogether, there are uh, 11 and that is led by Professor Arun Kumar and this is Arun Kumar. We have already covered three lectures. This is also we covered from this singer and this Arun Dagi also he covered yesterday. So let me until I reach to the telegram. Yeah. So this is <coughs> Professor Bernard Pelican. Uh, so he's from Institute of Water Management, Hydrology and Hydraulic Engineering, University of Life Science, Vienna, Austria, and he's recently retired. And he's a civil engineer, specialized in hydropower engineering, river regulation, hydromechanics and flood protection. And he served as a legal expert on hydropower exploitation and flood protection. And he is CEO and owner of a technical engineering and consultancy since uh, 1990. And he was CEO and senior consultant at Austrian Small Hydropower Association from 1986 to 2004. He holds Master of Business Administration Finance degree and graduate degree in electrical engineering. Sorry, it was a mistake. Sorry. He was president of European Small uh, Hydropower Association since 2004 to 2010, and he is owning a patent related to the fish lipping. And this is some of the highlight. Actually, he has so many title achievement, and he is a very seasoned global expert. So I would like to request Professor, you may go with presentation, please. Okay, so you can you can run the presentation. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. Thank you very much. Move the slides. Naman Aurora, please move the slides. Yes. Yes, you can. Uh, you may like to start, please. Next, please. Yes. This sounds very nice. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon to all of you. Uh, uh, a warm welcome. Uh, in my country, it's still before lunch, but these are three and a half hours later. So my name is uh, Bernhard Pelikan. I'm retired, as already mentioned, uh, but I'm still active in several projects. And today uh, we will talk about uh, some major components of small uh, hydropower plants, medium hydropower plants, uh, mainly from the construction uh, side, not uh, concerning turbine, etc. You will get this information from, from other lectures. Uh, at the very beginning, I would like to, to invite you to ask questions um, uh, because uh, it doesn't make sense that you, uh, you are missing some, some understanding. So just interrupt me. I am quite well trained in, in doing lectures since 40 years, so uh, it will not uh, be possible to, let's say, to disturb me anyhow. Can we have the next, please? So three topics um, are on, let's say, on the table uh, this uh, afternoon, the where, the water intake, but also the water conveyance. 
uh, the wear uh, as a main uh, part uh, when starting with the hydropower plant, the water intake, which is the most crucial element of any water abstraction. And finally, some uh, slides about water conveyance. Next, please. Uh, let's start with the wares. Uh, some some uh, principal uh, ideas, some principal facts. Uh, when we are going to build a wear, the main task is uh, to increase the water level. Uh, I underline this because it's only in few cases uh, the reason for uh, limited storage. So we may have some small storage, uh, for example, for a daily storage, but uh, the main task is the increase of water level to ease the water abstraction. We need the water for the hydropower plant, so we have to, to bring it anyhow out of the river. Uh, secondly, the basement of any uh, type of wear is a solid uh, basement. It could be done by different materials, uh, but the basement is, let's say, the, the main uh, topic. And in case of gated wares, uh, this basement is uh, completed by different types of uh, gates. Uh, we will come back uh, to these different types of gates a little bit later on. And uh, concerning, let's say, the load uh, put on these wares, uh, we have first a very simple static criteria, hydrostatic criteria. And this hydrostatic criteria is uh, the difference between the headwater level and the tailwater level. Uh, so if it's only two or three meters, it's more simple. If it's higher, six, eight, ten meters, then we have to put some more, uh, let's say, some more um, uh, interest on these static criteria. And the second main criteria is the hydraulic design uh, criteria. So we have um, to say that uh, the flood uh, has to pass or is, should be able to pass the wear without distracting the wear. So we need a certain figure, let's say, for example, the, the 100 years flood, and uh, we have to take care that this uh, 100 years flood will be able to pass the wear without any, without causing any problems or any distraction. Next, please. Uh, we have to differentiate into two types, as I already said. We have the fixed crest wares. Usually it was uh, the type of wear uh, several uh, tenth or even hundred years ago, where the technology was not, uh, was not uh, able uh, to produce uh, gates. So the old wares are in many, in most cases, fixed crest wares. But these fixed crest wares have, of course, some, some uh, uh, bad uh, sides, some, some disadvantages, uh, because uh, it's stable, it's concrete, it's stone, it's wood, whatever, uh, but it does not allow for any regulation of the headwater level. So you know for sure that in a, in a, in a wear, uh, the, the main task of the operator is a, mo a most stable, um, most stable uh, situation of the head water level. So uh, the maximum head water level to create finally the maximum head in the power house. Uh, and uh, in fixed crest wares, it cannot be, uh, cannot be regulated. So it will vary according to the flow. Uh, the gated wares can provide, of course, this advantage because if the uh, if the discharge is increasing, we can lower the the wear, we can open it uh, eventually, so we can uh, do some regulation. And this is a, a huge advantage given by these uh, gates. Uh, in any case, it's necessary that we have a cutoff wall upstream and downstream. Uh, in, in, in case of, of, uh, of repair work necessary, we need uh, to cut off the wear um, or to, let's say, to, to, to shut the wear against the headwater, but also against the tailwater. I will show you one or two pictures uh, giving a little bit more, a better, a better view of this. The construction material is very different. So we can 
we can, or, or let's say, in the fixed crest whales in in the old uh, in the old times, it was very often made of rock. In modern times, it's uh, usually made of concrete, uh, sometimes of wood, uh, but any combination is also allowed. So in in former decades, uh, wood and rock uh, was uh, let's say has the same uh, function as today uh, the concrete. So the wood gives the the form in many cases. The rock gives the, gives the stability. Um, and uh, concerning the gated the gates or the gated wares. Uh, we have uh, three materials. Uh, steel is the most common material, of course, and today we can produce uh, steel gates uh, quite easily. Uh, in former times, it was uh, many gates were made of wood. Uh, still now, some gates, some type of gates are made of wood and uh, rather modern, not very modern, but 30, 40 years old is rubber. So in, in, in case of the rubber dam, we will also see one or two pictures on a rubber dam. Next, please. Next, please. Thank you. Uh, so um, concerning sir, the... Sir, PPT is not showing, sir. Sorry? PPT is not showing. Presentation is not shared, sir, in a screen. Uh -huh. I cannot um, I cannot uh, change it because it's it's done uh, by by the organization. Yeah, we so can see, we can uh, see here from here. I see. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can see. Okay, good. It's important that you see everything. So we have, uh, of course, very many options to build the wear, and there are two main criteria. That's not the only criteria, of course, but the main criteria to decide is the cost. You may understand quite easily that uh, a, a fixed crest wear is, um, um, is less expensive, is cheaper than a gated wear. So, uh, to, to dimension the gate is always an, an, a kind of optimization. Uh, you will not do it as big as possible, but you will do it as big as necessary uh, to limit the cost. So cost is a critical, uh, critical task, of course, always in, in hydropower. And the second one is the, the well-known hydromechanical criteria, so the Polanyi formula, uh, I'm quite sure, as experts, you know this Polanyi formula. It's one of the most famous formulas all over the world, giving the flow uh, by, a, by, let's say, by a given uh, geometry of the of the wear. So you have the length in the wear. You have the the, uh, the additional value mu, uh, and you have, of course, the the age. So the headwater level, which is decisive. The the higher the headwater level uh, gets, uh, the higher the discharge will be so this is i think uh, the most the most uh, the most important uh, the most important thing so can we can we go on probably with uh, one or the other picture please yes uh, the overflow coefficient uh, with a greek letter mu uh, you see here uh, six different uh, shapes of uh, of um, wear uh, of crests, and uh, you see the values vary from roughly 0 0.5 to almost 0 0.8, and this value goes directly into the calculation um, of the discharge that can be uh, can be managed by the wear. Uh, it is uh, my, let's say, recommendation not uh, to take the highest value possible uh, because uh, it's, uh, let's say, a responsibility uh, by the designer uh, to ensure that uh, this maximum uh, water level will not uh, increase because then you may cause some problems with overflow and so on. So my recommendation, uh, go not uh, to the edge of these values, but uh, stay on the safe side. So it's better to have it a little bit lower than uh, too high. Uh, and you see, so usually you, you will take some uh, 0 0.7, uh, which is a quite usual uh, value, 0 0.65 to 0 0.7. The next, please. 
Uh, very quickly, uh, the most important part besides the wear is the so-called uh, stilling basin. And the stilling basin uh, uh, downstream the wear has an important function uh, because there uh, the uh, energy uh, will be dissipated and if you will not build such a stilling basin, you will have huge erosion, erosion downstream the wear body, and finally it will uh, it will lead to a uh, to a destruction of the wear because a very deep uh, deep hole of uh, erosion will be the result, and and that will not be let's say uh, very stable. So the dimensioning of such a stilling basin is a critical issue. We will not talk uh, about uh, this uh, further on because it's it's let's say it will uh, take too much time but uh, take care for this stilling basin and again the recommendation don't uh, make it too small uh, it's better to have it one or two or five meters longer than uh, two meters too short because then it will not function next please next please uh, here you see uh, for pictures of different materials, you see a wear of made of concrete, um, a banded wear. Uh, short explanation why banded, because uh, with this banded uh, shaping, you will increase the length of such a uh, of the wear crest and therefore limit uh, the head. Uh, in the in the headwater, uh, the increase of the head in the in the, in the headwater, uh, and therefore limit also the, the let's say the danger of, of flooding uh, surrounding areas. This is the reason why why fixed crest wears are very often not uh, directly from the right to the left hand side bank, uh, but uh, in a banded wear or, or in in other longer uh, shaping. On the right hand side, you see a very simple wooden wear. Uh, below the wooden wear, old fashioned, but nevertheless a very good solution, a wear made of fixed crest, a wear made of stone. And finally, a left hand side below, you see a little bit more modern version uh, built by Gabions. You know, the Gabions are uh, made of, of local available stone with a kind of, of steel uh, fence. So gabions, uh, in, in my view, a very a very good uh, method uh, doing construction works uh, close to the river and even building wares is, is a possible uh, possible solution. Next, please. Uh, Let's switch to the gates, to the gated wares. In recent times, uh, usually uh, the wares are um, um, gated, and so you will only in very few cases build fixed crest wares. Um, in principle, they... Uh, sorry? Okay, no question. In principle, they are constructed uh, cross to the river course to limit the length, uh, so they will be that they will take the or they will have the shortest length uh, possible. And uh, as already said, they consist of a fixed part, the foundation, most cases made of concrete, and a movable gate, in most cases made of steel or rubber dam. Um, and these types uh, have different let's say, ranges of application, different fields of application. Uh, so I will come back um, in, in very few minutes. And the main selection criteria, what is the best for your, uh, for your plant or for your design, is the relation between width and height. Uh, so we'll see that uh, different, uh, different types of gates uh, have also different ranges of application. Secondly, the safe operation during floods. Uh, you, of course, know that floods will not uh, come uh, announced. Uh, they come urgently and they will not come on Wednesday uh, lunchtime, that they will most probably come on Sunday or Saturday night when nobody is there and it's not the best weather when floods are coming, it's raining uh, and so on. So you need uh, to, to secure that uh, the safe operation is even possible in uh, times of flood. And 
Finally, which is um, partly also an um, ecological criteria, uh, the different bed load drifting features. Uh, nobody will be happy to have uh, much uh, bed load sedimentation in the backwater area. So the wares are very different in their, um, in their impact on the bed load uh, drifting. Um, and so from the hydraulic point of view, of course, the water can be discharged above the wear, above the gate, but also below the gate. So some are different. I will come uh, to this in, in right now. Next, please. Uh, in the next, uh, we see the overview of gates. We see the vertical gate, uh, the vertical gate combined with the flap gate, uh, the radial gate combined with the flap gate, the rubber dam in the second line, uh, only the flap gate, a uh, quite old fashioned um, version is the drum gate, which is recently not uh, constructed now, but also the double flap gate or roof where, uh, let's say it's the it's an old fashioned type of wares. Nevertheless, it was functioning quite well, but in, in, in recent times, it's in most cases replaced by a flap gate or by a rubber dam. Uh, flap gate and rubber dam uh, have uh, very similar ranges of application. Uh, on the pictures, I will explain in the next uh, page, I will explain uh, the, the range of application. Next, please. Uh, this is a very simple vertical uh, gate. Uh, I'm quite sure you have very similar uh, gates seen uh, quite often. It's made of steel. It uh, can be operated uh, by motor, by electromotor. It can be operated by hydraulic. It can be operated even by hand if uh, the gate, uh, there is no necessity to operate uh, the gate remote. So, uh, for example, in case it's a just a flushing gate, you can also operate it by hand. Uh, the steel made of this picture shows the, the vertical gate made of steel, but in, in former times, but still now, it's very often made uh, by wood, which is possible up to a width of, uh, let's say, five to six meters. I have seen huge uh, vertical gates with a width of up to six meters and a height of up to three meters. So it's a, a kind of monster. Next, please. Uh, the radial gate, uh, it's uh, not very often uh, applied in small hydropower plants, but more in, in, in big, in, in large hydropower plants. Nevertheless, it's a very important uh, gate. And I think in most of the, of the bigger, of the huge hydropower plants, you will find these radial gates. And uh, quite often you will find these radial gates uh, combined with a flap gate and this has a certain reason because with a flap gate on top of the radial gate you can regulate the water level uh, quite good and when lifting the radial gate you have uh, also a very good uh, function concerning the drift uh, the bed load drifting uh, so this radial gate is definitely an excellent, uh, an excellent solution, a quite old solution, but nevertheless, it's it's a, it's a new, it's 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 functioning uh, perfectly uh, up to up to now. Next, please. Uh, here you see a uh, flap gate, uh, the third uh, version. The flap gate uh, is uh, very suitable for for wide rivers, uh, but the head is quite limited. Uh, I would say with um, four or five meters, could be some examples even higher, but this is, let's say, the, the regular uh, limitation of flap gates. Uh, this one you see on the right-hand side picture is only one meter or one meter 20 height. Uh, on the left-hand side, you see you see um, a flap gate right now in, in let's say, in, in repair uh, stadium. You see the, the upstream uh, stop lock and you see the downstream uh, stop lock. And in the middle of the picture, the black one is, uh, is the flap gate. And it's uh, obviously uh, doing some, some repair or uh, rehabilitation work, or whatever. The flap gate is, uh, let's say, the, the most safe 
um, uh, gate because it uh, doesn't need any energy input when opening. It's just opened by the uh, water, by the static water pressure upstream. Uh, so there is no energy needed in case of flood uh, because it, it will open, uh, of course controlled, it will open by the water pressure. This is uh, of highest importance because in case of flood it could happen that there is no electricity, there is not uh, the, the, the hydraulic, uh, is the, the hydraulics is not functioning uh, due to lack of electricity and so on. But in this case nothing will happen because it will get opened by the water pressure. Next please. Uh, the rubber dam, uh, as I said, it was invented um, approximately in the 80s uh, uh, of last century, uh, mid 80s. And um, nowadays uh, we have two uh, versions of these rubber dams, which is quite, which are quite suitable uh, for also for wide rivers, but limited uh, height, uh, limited by similar to, to flap gates by four to maximum five meters. This uh, rubber dam is, I think, maximum two meters height. It was installed in my country, in Austria. Uh, it has the same advantage uh, as the flap gate so it's opening according to the water uh, pressure in a controlled way so no need for external uh, energy uh, but it has the disadvantage that the bed load uh, drifting is in both cases not uh, simple because the water level is lowering uh, and uh, when it's down then is uh, no no let's say uh, no power available no energy available to transport the, the bed load so this is the main disadvantage of a flap and a rubber dam that the bed load transport is is not simple to be to be managed next please Next picture, please. Thank you. Uh, we leave now the first uh, of the three picture of the three chapters, uh, the the wares. We uh, switch to the water intake. As I already said, it's the crucial part uh, of a hydropower plant because uh, we have to let's say to manage uh, the water from a very natural way of transport to an artificial way of transport. And water is not usually not coming uh, in a clear way, but in most cases it's uh, coming with some uh, bed load, with some debris, and our job is, uh, let's say, to to get in the clean water and to uh, leave out uh, all the, 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 let's say, the, uh, the material which is uh, not uh, most welcome at the power plant. We have two options to, to, uh, to construct the water intake. Uh, a very common way is this, the, the, the open flow intake, but there is also the subsurface intake possible, which is not uh, very often used. It's very quite often used if you have a storage basin, then you can uh, directly connect the penstock with a turbine. Uh, via, um, uh, via um, intake uh, construction works, uh, but it's usually done in, or applied in, in storage basins. And the water remains all the time under pressure. The open flow intake is, uh, let's say, a little bit more difficult uh, because uh, it, uh, it, uh, it, it, it takes the water in, 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 open, uh, in open flow or in open surface. Uh, and it's usually the, let's say, the common way uh, in, in, in small hydro, in mean hydro uh, power, mean sized hydropower plants. Uh, you can also combine it, of course. You can have an open flow intake. Uh, the water transport uh, continues with an open channel. And then after a, a kind of intake basin, you, uh, you lead it to the penstock and uh, finally to the turbine, which is a quite usual construction works in, in mean or high head uh, plants that you have at least part of the water conveyance structure as an open channel as good as possible because the open channel will in many cases uh, be constructed a little bit more cheaper than the, the penstock. Next picture, please. 
Uh, there are several general design criteria of how the intake should be constructed. Of course, the size of the river, the type of the river, uh, it could be low bed load, even no bed load, or very heavy, heavy bed load, the cross section of the river, uh, the amount of floating debris uh, transport, and uh, what is very important, the flushing options, because uh, you you will, let's say, you will keep uh, the, the, the bed load and also the floating debris out of the channel, but then you have to find a way uh, to flush uh, exactly this material. You cannot store it uh, somewhere close to the intake. So this is very important. And there are some general dimensioning uh, criteria. Uh, it should be uh, according uh, to the rated flow. So, of course, uh, you should, uh, let's say, not take 100% of the rated flow when dimensioning the, the intake. You should take 120% because sometimes it may happen that uh, the, the intake is, uh, is not fully open because one or the other tree is, is uh, positioned there. So, you will lose a cross section. Uh, so, therefore, dimension it a little bit uh, larger than necessary. Of course, uh, we have to limit the friction loss because friction loss means head and head means money. Uh, and the flow velocity, uh, this uh, kind of intake structure should not be too high, of course, for the reason of friction loss. Um, a rough estimation uh, gives uh, the, the figure 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 meter per second. Uh, this is a quite, quite good value uh, to operate. So if you have, let's say, 10 cubics uh, per second uh, at the intake, then uh, try to, to, to have, let's say, to have the, 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 the cross section at the intake uh, by approximately 15 square meters or something like this. Uh, this would be a good solution. Next, please. Next, yeah, thank you. Uh, there are some additional criteria. Um, applied uh, preferably in low head uh, plants. If you uh, are looking for a location at the natural river, uh, try to find, if it's possible, of course, uh, to locate the, the water intake in a river bend. So best uh, would be to locate it at the outer side of the uh, river bend because uh, there is a strong secondary flow and uh, this will avoid, it is one of the first steps to avoid the capture of bed load, of gravel, of sand and uh, of this material. Another criteria which is not easy to fulfill, but it gives some, some safety, is that the rated discharge, so the discharge should take off the river, should be less than or maximum 50% of the critical discharge. And the critical discharge is uh, the discharge when the bed load transport starts up. Usually it's a little bit higher than mean flow. Uh, there is very little uh, bed load transport, let's say, in, 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 in a discharge, which is uh, 50, 60, 70 percent of mean flow, but there is huge uh, discharge, uh, huge bed load transport, for example, uh, starting with some uh, twice or three times uh, dish, uh, the, the, the mean flow. So there is, it's very individual from river to river, but you have to find out what is approximately the critical discharge. If you have uh, let's say the target to uh, to take off more water, then you have to find solutions avoiding the intake, and this could be uh, the construction of a county level sill. I will show you in a minute uh, one or two pictures uh, of a let's say optimized uh, water intake. Uh, the floating items, so the the debris, is usually. Uh, uh, is usually, uh, let's say, coming to the intake at the outer side of the bend. So um, on the one hand side, you can avoid with positioning at the outer side of the bend, you can avoid uh, the bed load, the, the, the gravel and so on, but you will have, of course, the mass of the floating items. 
which uh, have to be managed, uh, for instance, by by rigs. Uh, this is uh, possible. So if I could, uh, if I could um, uh, select what is, uh, let's say, uh, what is my my favorite, or what 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 is, let's say, that the worst uh, case is the bad load. So I would prefer debris uh, and and uh, not the bad load because the handling of the bad load is more difficult than the handling of the of the floating items. And the bed load transport preferably uh, is running at the inner side of the band. In the next slide, I will show you uh, a sketch. Next, please. Yes, uh, you see here in, in, uh, in the upper part of the picture, you see a quite optimal solution uh, when the water uh, goes to the channel at the outer side of, of, the, of the river uh, reach. Uh, and uh, in some cases, you may not have uh, the, the band uh, available. So you can create a kind of artificial band by installing, by constructing uh, these uh, kind of groins. Uh, you see upstream uh, the, the intake. Uh, these kind of groins will simulate um, a sort of uh, river band and uh, the, the, the result will be that uh, below or let's say downstream these groins and uh, between the two groins, uh, the bed load material will be sedimented and you will get much clearer water uh, to the intake um, and to the powerhouse finally. Next, please. Next one, please. Thank you. This is uh, a quite perfect uh, water intake, uh, and you see um, you see quite well that uh, several parts, several parts of construction are serving uh, different uh, tasks. Uh, the first is the flushing channel. So the best version is not to bring the material to the channel. The best is to keep it outside and to flush it and to keep it in the river. Uh, the intake sill, uh, you see the red lines and, and the red dots. Uh, the intake sill uh, is, uh, let's say, avoiding the bed load. And then you have the trash rack. Uh, we'll come back a little bit uh, later. The trash rack is mainly um, uh, to avoid uh, floating items and also the skimming wall, which is close to the uh, water surface. It could be just a floating tree. In former decades, it was just, a, even now, it's just a floating uh, tree, uh, um, keeping leaves or um, uh, different uh, stuff coming on the surface of the water away from the intake. Uh, the solid material uh, can, of course, partly be managed uh, by the intake skill, but if we get something in uh, to the channel, then we need the settling basin, we need the flushing gate, and, of course, we need a trash rack cleaning. The next, please. Uh, here you see a cross section. Uh, let's say in 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 relation uh, to the to the plan view we have seen in the previous uh, picture, uh, you see the cantilever sill and you see uh, the lines, uh, the dotted lines uh, showing uh, the the circulation uh, flow, uh, bringing the water and not only the, bringing the gravel uh, with the help of the water uh, to the uh, to the flushing gate. Uh, you see the skimming wall, which uh, could, uh, let's say, come 20 centimeters uh, lower or down to the to the water. Uh, so it's 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 a question of of head loss, of course. If you make it deeper, you will have a lot of head loss because you increase the flow velocity. And in front of this skimming wall, you have, uh, in most cases, a trash rack. So to avoid uh, bigger floating items uh, to get into the channel. What is uh, not uh, given here, but you see it uh, uh, right or let's say downstream the, the trash rack, you have uh, two, two vertical lines and these two vertical lines uh, indicate uh, a stop lock uh, or a vertical gate 
uh, that can be set uh, in case of uh, in case of, of uh, emergency, in case of flood, in case of of repair work. So you have uh, to install uh, some some uh, some stop lock or some gate uh, to to keep the water out of the channel and finally out of the the powerhouse. Uh, next, please. Uh, the trash rack, uh, also an important part at the intake. Uh, we uh, usually try to install two types of uh, trash racks. Uh, the one with the bigger clearance is the coarse rack. The clearance could be between 20 centimeters and 50 centimeters. It's huge and, and massive bars, uh, most cases made of steel. In uh, former decades, it was made of wood. Uh, and uh, this coarse rack is in many cases uh, cleaned manually. But uh, in the previous, let's say, one or two or three decades, also the, the automatic cleaning of the course rack has become uh, more often or has been installed more often uh, with a horizontal uh, trash rack cleaning machine uh, to avoid this, this uh, additional work. But the, this, uh, the material uh, passing or being able to pass the course rack is even too big um, uh, to, be, uh, to be managed with a turbine. So we have to install more or less immediately uh, upstream the turbine um, a kind of fine rack. And this fine rack uh, in most cases uh, consists of several smaller rack elements. Uh, and in most cases uh, you have installed a trash rack cleaning machine. There are different kinds of cleaning machine available. The most common is today the hydraulic cleaning machine. In former days it was a chain cleaning machine or a rope cleaning machine, steel rope of course. Uh, but a cleaning machine is uh, important. Um, another problem is, uh, let's say, the clearance of these of this fine rack uh, because it's necessary for small turbines to keep this clearance quite small. For example, a Pelton turbine, it's, there is a need for 10 to 12 millimeters uh, clearance. For large uh, Kaplan turbines or Francis turbines, it's not necessary to have a clearance of, of two, one or two centimeters. But uh, the hydraulic, so that the clearance, of course, um, uh, limited or limits the, uh, the, 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 the total cross section and therefore increases the flow velocity and therefore increases again uh, the friction loss which is not in the interest of the operator. Uh, the fishery demands, uh, in my, at least in my country, a maximum clearance of 20 millimeters Right now, in some countries, it's even smaller with 15 millimeters clearance uh, just to protect fish uh, of getting into the turbine, which is understandable, but anyhow, it's, it, it, it's, it's difficult. The flow velocity, it makes it difficult. The flow velocity should not exceed more than 0 0.6 to 0 0.8 meters per second, again, in order to minimize the head loss. Next one, please. Uh, here you see two examples of uh, a coarse rack. Uh, the upper left one, uh, you see it made of wood. Um, and uh, on the right hand picture, you see a coarse rack made of, of uh, steel, uh, steel bars. Um, and you see the clearance 20, 30 centimeters. You see also the material uh, hold back uh, by the by the uh, coarse rack, and you see the flushing gate immediately uh, downstream the uh, the coarse rack. Uh, one uh, remark: uh, don't uh, forget uh, that uh, the the inclination of the rack. Uh, so you see a, a slight inclination on the left hand side picture by 70 degrees. Uh, this inclination will not increase the total area, the total cross section, the total area of the 
of the uh, of the rack. Uh, it will only ease the cleaning of the rack. So this would be, let's say, a wrong understanding of hydraulics uh, to to incline it it uh, by let's say 45 degrees and then believe that uh, we have uh, gotten an, an increase of the of the uh, of the cross section by by uh, additionally 40 percent. So this is not the fact. Uh, so it's only easing the, the, the cleaning. Next, please. Here you see a, a quite nice picture um, of a, a fine rack, and you also see the, uh, the hydraulic uh, cleaning machine. The hydraulic uh, cleaning machine, uh, let's say, uh, taking uh, the, the fine material, the fine floating material, and putting him, uh, putting it uh, out of the water, and then uh, several options are available uh, how to manage this uh, this uh, floating debris. What I forgot to say earlier is that uh, we have uh, the course rack in order to protect. Uh, the, the channel, but also to protect the fine rack. Because if you imagine a huge uh, piece of, of, of wood uh, of a tree will come directly to the fine rack, it will in most cases, um, uh, let's say, hurt or at least uh, um, uh, destroy uh, the, the cleaning machine, which is not uh, constructed uh, for, for lifting huge trees. So, coarse rack uh, protecting the fine rack. Next, please. Uh, after the intake, or after the, let's say, after the rack, we have uh, to manage the material we could not avoid to, to get into the intake. Uh, and that can be done quite well with the so called settling uh, basin. The settling basin, uh, the main task is the sedimentation or to, 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 to collect the, uh, the, the still in the water uh, available or the, the, in, the, the, the material which is still in the water after the intake, but should not, uh, should not reach uh, the waterway and finally should not reach the turbine. So uh, the idea is uh, the reduction of the flow velocity in this kind of uh, settling basin, in most cases made of concrete, uh, and uh, finally to clear uh, the water uh, and the sedimentation, to initiate the sedimentation of solid material. Uh, next uh, slide, please. It shows the design criteria of such a settling basin. Uh, of course, the length is the uh, one of the design criteria and the sinking time. Uh, and the sinking time relates uh, to, um, to, let's say, to, to criteria, to the factors uh, related uh, to the material. Uh, so the more heavy the material is, the quicker the sinking time will be, and the uh, the bigger the particles are, the quicker the sinking. But uh, in many cases, we have we have uh, let's say very fine material, and this fine material needs a lot of time to sink down. So the design values uh, we need to have is the, of course the rated discharge. The efficiency, efficiency mean uh, which uh, size of, 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 of grain size we would like uh, to be sedimented. So it could be, for example, 1.3, 1.2, 1.5 millimeters. These are, let's say, quite the usual uh, figures. Then there are rules. Uh, the width should be less than one eighth of the length. And it should also be less than uh, two times the depth um, of the of the sedimentation basin. Usually, this, these uh, these design values result in a flow velocity of about 0.3, could be even a little bit smaller, 0.25, up to 0.5, which is, in my view, a uh, little bit too fast because uh, then you will need a very long settling basin. What is uh, to be said additionally is that uh, we need, of course, uh, an option to flush. Uh, 
uh, and in many cases it's forgotten by the designers. Uh, almost all the designers can design a very effective settling basin, but they are not able to design the flushing. So if you have to do something, please take care that you have flushing uh, valves uh, and and uh, to to let's say to to get rid of the material uh, settled down. Next, please. Here you see just a picture of, some, of, of a Tyrolean ware with a right hand side intake into the desilting chamber, settling basin, uh, the gate chamber, uh, the diversion to the powerhouse, and also the flushing channel. Next, please. Uh, water conveyance. Two things we have to, uh, to um, think about open channel uh, or closed waterway. First of all, the open channel, you see several pictures how to build an open channel. The most simple channel is an earth channel, uh, could, be, uh, could be applied in a flat area or in a slightly inclined area, but not too steep. Uh, and uh, in, if you have uh, if you have steeper uh, steeper uh, environment, then you have to uh, solve uh, the channel, the open channel problem with some concrete, with the help of, of concrete. With these solutions, you have see, you will see on the right hand side. What you have to take care of, uh, especially in earth channels, you have to apply a kind of ceiling. Uh, it's the one version, uh, otherwise you will lose a lot of water. Uh, either a ceiling or if the material fits, then you have to, to select the correct material. You can also uh, do it without ceiling, but by compacting uh, the material of the dam uh, needed. Then uh, you need, of course, the correct material and then you can eventually avoid a ceiling by a foil, for example, by plastic or by, by asphalt. Uh, you can do several several options um, to, uh, or by, by, uh, by, by piles, by sheets, uh, steel sheets. You can, you can have several options uh, to do the ceiling or to fulfill the, the needs concerning ceiling. Next, please. Here you see a very simple open channel. Uh, one uh, remark concerning the flow velocity. It should be smaller than one meter per second uh, because otherwise you will create again head loss, but it should be uh, higher than 0 0.5 meters per second to avoid sedimentation. If you make it bigger, if you have a too uh, low flow velocity, all these uh, channels will serve as sedimentation basin and after one, two, three years you have to empty it and to dig out all the fine material having sedimented in these, uh, in these channels. So you have a quite small range between maximum and minimum flow velocity. Next please. Uh, I will not go into detail, but uh, now we are going to the pipes. Uh, the dimensioning of the pipes is usually an optimization process. And you have to compare on the one hand side the cost of construction and construction cost is not only the cost of pipe, but also the uh, cost of pipe laying and in difficult uh, areas in difficult uh, ge geographical or topographical conditions, uh, you will have uh, the same price uh, to pay for the pipe laying that you have paid for the pipe. So plus 100% in uh, difficult, uh, difficult um, uh, topographical situation. And on the other hand, uh, you see the variation of the revenue to the variation due to the variation of friction loss. Um, I have uh, given you just uh, created a very simple example where you uh, uh, alter the uh, dimension of the pipe from 0 0.6 to 1.1 meter. And you see the flow velocity varying from 3.5 meters per second to 1.05 meters per second. And you see also the, the power, for example, uh, according to the friction to the head loss. 
the net head uh, varies from 111 meters to 134 meters. And accordingly, uh, the kilowatt, the, the power, and also the megawatt hours per year, so the production. And uh, the revenues, and you find out finally that the payback period uh, uh, of, of, uh, of, of different uh, solutions uh, will be uh, uh, quite different. So uh, the smallest uh, will be uh, done in uh, 2.06, the second 5.18 and the 0 0.8 with 21 years. It's no more, or let's say, is the limit of this uh, of this short example. So in this uh, in this case, you will most probably select the zero point eight uh, the zero point eight uh, dimension because the zero point nine will be uh, too expensive, and then the payback period will be almost seventy years. Uh, this is only the, the, let's say, the variation of the cost of the pipe. Uh, of course, you have in a more complicated, in a more complex way, you have to do it for all the hydropower plant. Next picture, please. Here you see a sketch, you see a sketch of the application of different material of pipes. You see plastic, polyethylene, GRP, uh, uh, which is uh, which is also plastic, you know. Then the ductile cast pipes, very good material. Uh, the best material is of course the steel. Uh, in former years, you have uh, very often used wood, which is, uh, let's say, in certain cases in, in some developing countries where you have wood, it's still a good option. Uh, and in some very few cases, you can also need uh, concrete, but that needs uh, very low pressure uh, or, or you probably only to uh, to, to apply it uh, on, on tailwater canals, then you can uh, do the concrete. And you see uh, uh, on this on this sketch uh, or on this on this graph, uh, you see the polyethylene uh, with very small diameter and small pressure, and the steel is let's say the king of the material. You can uh, you can uh, construct it, or uh, you can solve it, or uh, select it with all all dimensions up to two thousand meters or even higher, and also all dimensions. Next, please. You can see some some pictures. No, first the let's say the, the the ranges of application. So you see the soft polyethylene, less than ten bars. The uh, PVC, uh, less than sixteen bars, but not uh, very huge dimensions. The GRP. Uh, discharge up to 20 cubic meters per second. That means uh, two, three meters diameter and less than 25 bars. Um, and the ductile cast uh, pipes, not very big, but high pressure and the steel pipes unlimited. Next, please. Next picture, please. Yeah, here you see the example, the GRP, left-hand side, uh, on the on the on the on the picture, then on the right hand side you see steel, and uh, below you see the ductile cast iron. The GRP uh, is glass fiber reinforced plastic. You know that uh, is very smooth inside, so has very little losses. Uh, there is no uh, danger of uh, little erosion. Um, so it's, a, it's an excellent material, uh, the GRP, but also the steel, of course. And finally, in my last slide, uh, please, the next one, uh, you have, uh, when dealing with pipes, you have also to, uh, to deal with the pressure in the pipes and not only with the static pressure curve, but also with the dynamic pressure curve. And that means uh, water hammer, but also uh, down surge. And the water hammer, just a very simple formula uh, with a critical closing time. You see the, the water hammer is, uh, is uh, related to the closing time, the flow velocity, but also the head. 
so uh, if you can, in a certain case, uh, uh, let's say, reduce the closing time, you will, uh, in the same way, you will reduce, of course, uh, the water hammer. And to reduce the water hammer means you can use the cheaper material uh, because uh, the pressure will go down. So this is also a, a question of optimization. That's it from my side. It was a lot of information. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, I'm waiting for your questions. If there are any. I hope I could explain most of the items. So I see very many participants, so over 100, which is great. Namaste, Professor. For your very informative and uh, you know, enlightening slides. So, I have to ask you one question regarding yeah. the uh, design of wear. Am I audible? Yeah. Okay. So, I'm uh, going to ask you because uh, I'm from Nepal and uh, we have to work on the topography. It's just like we have to design the wear on 10. 10% or sometimes 20% slope. Mm -hmm. so such, such situation, you know, so the whatever the way you have explained, uh, I think uh, it is quite complicated for us to implement this thing. Uh, you know, so in such situation, you know, so how is the trains wear and its performance in such type of slope? So I would like to hear from you. Yeah. I would say, so I've never been in Nepal, but I know a little bit about your country. It's high alpine, it's a paradise for hydropower, of course, but your rivers are quite wild and you have a huge bad load uh, situation, I suppose. And I think the only, situ the only solution in your rivers will be a Tyrolean where uh, and this is uh, quite, uh, you can quite simple dimension it. Also in this case, I would recommend uh, to, uh, to, to add some 20, 30%. So not to, to calculate it precisely uh, according to the, uh, to the uh, rated flow, but then add some 20, 30% because there may be some load on the, on the rake. Uh, and my recommendation, do it as steep as possible. So that means uh, 25 to 30 degrees inclination. Uh, to avoid uh, stones uh, keeping laying on the on the on the on the um, on the on the wear, because uh, stones remaining on the wear will reduce your 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 flow, your intake uh, discharge. And uh, third recommendation: if you have a really huge bed load, then try to set a, a second a second layer. So you have uh, you have the, the two centimeters, for example, clearance in the fine rack, but uh, posi construct or position a second uh, rack uh, uh, 30, 40 centimeters above the fine rack uh, for the huge stones coming down. Uh, so for the 500 kilos or the 200 kilo stones uh, rolling down during a flood, because these big stones will uh, will demolish your fine rack. So you have to avoid, you have to protect the fine rack with such a, a, a huge rack. Uh, trails, for example, could can be used quite quite well for this uh, protecting rack. So isn't it difficult to uh, continue with the Two layers of rack. Uh, please, please repeat your question. I haven't got it. So, isn't it difficult uh, for cleaning uh, the two layers of rack? Uh, the cleaning should uh, work automatically. 
so you don't have any cleaning machine at the uh, at the Tyrolean ware. It should be constructed in a way that it clears, uh, it cleans by its own, uh, due to the to the to the inclination. If you make it uh, more or less horizontal, then you will have huge problems. Make it uh, rather steep. As I said, uh, 30 degrees could be a quite good option. Okay. By the way, it's uh, it's uh, valid for all the participants. Uh, you have my email address. And of course, you can give me an email, you can ask me questions later on. So I'm already retired. I have some spare hours available. So if you have an additional question, just come back to me uh, with the email and I can guarantee that uh, you will get an answer as good as can as I can give it to you. OK, very nice. Thank you, sir. You're so, most welcome. You're we welcome. But Dale, I think you were muted. Hello. Yeah. Are there any more questions? Hello, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, this is Rinzin from Bhutan. Yeah. Uh, Thank you for the wonderful presentation, sir. Uh, firstly, uh, you, I have this uh, one uh, very simple questions. Uh, although in the presentation, the, the professor has uh, shown the criteria for selecting the types of uh, pen stock yeah. uh, from the steel to GRP, but uh, uh, I want to know in terms of the uh, what's your experience in uh, uh, with the GRP pipe, as uh, with compared to the the steel uh, pen stock, so in mm -hmm. terms of the cost and in terms of the durability. Mm -hmm. Okay, so as I said, the uh, the GRP is a is a very good material concerning the roughness because it's very smooth, so we will have very little uh, friction loss. Uh, but uh, it depends uh, also on the on the situation whether you can we you can uh, bury it. Uh, so you have two options: uh, either to put it uh, above the surface, or you can you can put it under surface. Under surface, it will be protected much better. So the the physical uh, let's say danger um, uh, of or endangering of the GRP is of course higher than the one of the steel pipe. Uh, the steel pipe will be most probably more expensive, uh, and uh, but the the laying of the steel pipe is easier because you have to be very careful when laying the GRB pipe. Uh, to avoid any any punctual pressure because this will uh, most probably destroy uh, the pipe. So it's it's a high tech uh, pipe, but it can be hurt uh, in some cases more easily than a steel pipe. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, hello, sir. I'm uh, Suner from Sri Lanka. Ah, hello. Hello. So I have one question. Uh, in a uh, in a hydropower plant with have a channel length more than thousand meters, is yeah. it okay to combine diesel tin tank and four bay tank together? That means uh, put the diesel tin tank at the four bay tank itself. Will there be an effect from the uh, bed bed uh, channel bed erosion? Mm -hmm. uh, have I understood correctly that you have a total head of one thousand meters? Yeah. Uh, no, okay. sir, actually, channel length is thousand meters. Uh huh. Uh, channel length is what, meters. What is the so, what is the uh, what is the diameter of the pipe or the estimation of the diameter? 
no sir I, i'm talking about the channel it's, it's a channel from weir to phobe tank there's a yeah. length uh, around 1000 meters ah uh, so the length is 1000 meters okay yes so uh, yeah. rather than putting a separate diesel tin tank we are checking whether it is possible to combine the four bay tank and diesel tin tank together because it will have a co uh, mm -hmm. considerable cost saving but uh, we are worried whether there is a effect from the bed, bed load material uh, to the channel bed yeah because uh, i think it, it it depends on if you have uh if you have uh, let's say the channel uh, let's say the uh, the the the, the, in, the, the descender is at the intake and then you have the open channel and then you have the 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 the, the four bay or the intake basin uh, to the penstock so if there is a danger that uh, some material gets into the channel you have of course uh, put uh, a kind of of intake uh, basin at the end of the channel but it could be combined so you could do a, a little little bit of bigger uh, a bigger construction works uh, serving as a as a let's say descending but also as a intake basin it should not necessarily be two different two different construction works it could be done in one okay sir okay thank you very much sir. thank you thank you Any more questions? Tularam, you are muted. Please, you can you just unmute yourself. Only then we can listen to you. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, audience, and uh, for your pre excellent presentation. Uh, so I would like to thank to Professor Pedigan, and thank you very much for your your time. So now. We will have just a five-minute break, then we will start another session. Thank you, Peligan. Okay. Thank you very much, and okay. I invite all the participants to come back to me. I, I, it would be a pleasure to help you. Okay. Bye bye. Your, your email has been disseminated. No problem. Sorry. Your email has been disseminated to all participants. Very good. Okay. Thank you for your help. Thank you very Thank much, you. and Thank have you. a good, have a good onward uh, course. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.